Hey guys, so in this video, we are going to look at the grid feature that Figma just released. And to use this feature, you need to have a layout because this feature only works on layouts. So here I have a MacBook Air layout and we are going to activate the grid feature on this layout and learn how it works. Now, before we activate the grid feature on this layout, I'm going to say this. The grid feature is just another way in which we can arrange items in our layout. So far, before now, we only used the vertical direction property and the horizontal direction property to arrange items in our auto layout, right? Now, what Figma has done is Figma has given us another method that we can use to arrange items in our layout or you can say in our auto layout. And this is also very interesting. So how do we use the grid feature? When you get your layout, now take note, this is just a regular layout. It's a MacBook Air layout. I haven't made it an auto layout. Now, when you get your layout in your canvas, keep it selected, then come here under the layout section and you'd see the grid feature there. Now click on the grid feature there to activate it on your layout. Now, as you can see, when I activated the grid feature on my layout, you can see I have four boxes or you can say four containers here. I have this one here. I have this one here, I have this one, and I have this one. Now, if I want to place my items inside my layout, I can just drag any item I want to place and place them inside these four boxes. Let's see how we can do that with these images here. Let's take this image and let's place it inside this first grid box or grid container. Let's do this. And you can see when I drag and I place it inside that container, it stays just inside that container. I can do it with this other image. You can see it stays inside that container. I can also bring this here and I can bring this here. Now you can see that with the grid feature, I am able to easily arrange these four images inside my layout. Now, can we edit or can we explore the grid feature further? Yes, we can. Let's take these images back to where they were and let us see how we can edit the grid property or the grid feature whenever we add it on our layout. So I'm going to keep my layout selected still. And while my layout that has the grid is selected, I'll come here and I'm going to click on this particular property. You can see where my mouse cursor is on. Now, whenever you add a grid feature or a grid property to a layout, this space here that initially contained the alignment property will now change to have this grid settings on it. Now, you can see I have two times two or two by two there. Now, what this two by two means is my grid has two columns and two rows. And let's count the two columns and the two rows. This is one column and this is another column. Then this is one row and this is another row. So you can see that actually we have two columns and two rows. Now, something cool that we can do is we can actually increase the numbers of these columns and these rows. I can come here, keep the layout selected, click on this grid property here, come here. This box here is meant for the number of columns you want. I can change that from two to four. And the moment I do that, you'd see that I now have four columns. I have one column two columns, three columns, and four columns. And for my row, I still have two rows. I can make these rows to become three, just like this. And you can see now I have three rows, one, two, and three. So this is how you can edit the number of rows and columns you have in your grid. So I'm going to keep the row set to two, and I'm going to keep the columns set to three. Now, another cool thing is this. The space between the columns and the rows can be increased or reduced. Now, I can come here and increase this space here between the rows. Now, I can increase that row space by coming here to this property, which is called gap between rows. I can click inside that property and I can increase that space to 32 pixels. And as you can see, the space is increased. I can also increase the space between the columns in my grid by coming here to this property called gap between columns. Click inside the property, take out what's there, and I can also increase it by 32 pixels. Now, another very cool thing about the grid property or the grid feature in Figma is that we can even add 
hardened spaces around our grid containers. Now, as you can see for now, the padding is set to zero on the horizontal axis and zero on the vertical axis. So I can come here now and I can increase the padding to 24 horizontally and 24 vertically. Now you can see my grid is padded. Now let's even increase the padding space to 32 on both sides. And that's cool. So now that we have this, what else can we do to edit or to configure our grid containers for that? This is something we can also do. We can reduce the height of a row of grid containers and we can also increase the height of a row of grid containers. What do I mean by that? I can come here now and click on this grid container. When I click on it, you would notice that it will be selected. It's going to be selected with a light blue color that these other ones don't have. Now, the moment this container is selected, I would want you to take note of a very tiny blue dot here. When I hover on that blue dot, a text that says auto will appear. Now, I can click on that blue dot to select it. The moment I click on that blue dot, you'd see that this row of grid containers will be highlighted and I can click and hold the bottom of that selection, hold and drag upwards. And as you can see, this is me reducing the height of all the grid containers in this row. And this is also me increasing the height of all the grid containers in that row. Now, another cool thing we can do when we place our items inside our grid containers is this. I can come here now and I can bring this image and place it inside the first grid container. And then I can hold the edge of the image and extend it into the second grid container like this, right? And when I do that, I can still come here and hold this other edge or this other end and stretch it into these other grid containers. Now you can see that I have made this image to use four grid containers in my layout. Now I can just keep this here and I can bring this other image and place it here just like this. Now I can bring another image place it here and stretch it across these whole containers here, just like this. So you can see that grid containers actually help us to place our items efficiently in our layout. And it's sometimes faster than using the vertical direction property and the horizontal direction property in auto layout. Now, this is something you should always do, right? Whenever you place an image inside your grid container, Whenever you place an image inside a grid container, you can also lock the aspect ratio of that image. For example, this image is placed in here, right? I'll keep the image selected, come here, and then click on lock aspect ratio. That way, when I expand the size of the image, it's not going to lose quality or area just like that, right? Now, this is for images. What about when you want to place a component inside a grid container? Let's look for a component that we can place in here. So let's say we bring in this component and we try to place it inside this container. Now, when you have a component that you are placing inside your grid container, make sure that the component is a responsive component. And that means you must have created your component with an auto layout and also with best responsive design practices. So make sure that your component is well designed and is responsive or else you won't be able to stretch the component successfully across grid containers. So you can put anything you want to put actually inside a grid container and you can always stretch it into other grid containers if you see the need for that to happen. Now, before we call it a wrap, I'm just going to let you know that the same way you can increase or reduce the height of grid containers in a row, that's the same way you can increase or reduce the width of grid containers in a column. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's keep this grid container selected. Now, while this grid container is selected, you will also notice this blue dot at the top of that grid container. When I hover on that blue dot, a text that says auto will appear. Now, when I click on that text, this column will be selected and I can click on the edge of this selection and expand the width of the containers in this column or I can reduce the width of the containers in this column. Thank you very much.